Hi, this is Summer Kennard with Summer. I want to talk to you today about a new series where I'm going to share with you what it's like to pray with PTSD. I call it the P is for prayer. So today I want to tell you a story about whenever I first started to really process trauma. And I call this story Shattered. What happened was when I was a child, I, I underwent a lot of different types of trauma. And I'm not going to re-traumatize you by talking about everything, but my ACEs score is 9 out of 10. I had a lot of things happen that were bad. Um, that's a short way of saying it. So I want you to realize that even if I'm not talking about it specifically, I might have gone through something similar, or maybe not. Cause, um, but that's not the main point. It's that what I want you to know is not... Um, how severe the trauma was or all the specifics and I don't want you to just compare it to your trauma but I want you to know that this is born out of experience and that's my point here so what happened was whenever I got um, to be a, a young woman I went away to college and while I was there I started to try to put myself back together and the image that came to me when I was about 19 years old uh, one day I just sort of, I started writing and I wrote the normal things that I had been writing down in my journal and I suddenly just like had this moment of clarity and I said, this is, none of this is real. It doesn't make sense. I'm not being realistic. I'm not doing anything about the things I've experienced. And I suddenly started writing this prayer and I didn't know where the prayer had come from exactly. But this prayer helped me to realize that my way forward was going to be through communion with God and sort of walking into the flame of God. It was the way I was seeing God's love at the time. It's like a, a flame that would hurt, but it would be a good hurt. That sounds weird, but okay. Um, a lot of times we use these kind of metaphors when we're talking about prayer. We try to talk about the flame of the Lord, the love of God. And uh, there are, you know, the God's word is like a hammer breaking rocks in pieces and things like that. These things are in the Bible. There are metaphors because it's hard to talk about. But one of the things that everyone who's been through trauma and then shown up in a church can relate to is the experience of somebody telling you to just pray. Well, how do you just pray whenever the words that people are using to mean something intimate and whole and good in the church? are words that were associated in your life with horrible things, terrible abuses and pain. Uh, basically, I want to talk to you about some of the ways that we can redeem those languages and some of the strategies, some of the reframing we can do to start to have a more wholesome and healing prayer life whenever you've been through extensive trauma. And so that you will be able to get to the point in your life where you also can reclaim the beautiful parts of scripture and the tradition of the church without it just being stuck in trauma. So that's what happens in trauma is we're stuck. And um, real quick, I'm going to tell you something about the way that everybody, whether we've gone through trauma or not, whether we have ADHD or not autism or not, everybody has certain ways that they process attention. Your brain will always do things in this order, three things in this order. First, you're going to feel. Second, you're going to see. And third, you're going to think. Now, because you do that, you feel first, you see second, you think, think third. What happens with trauma is what do we usually do? We'll have a feeling and we're holding that feeling somewhere in our bodies. And a lot of times, you know, if you haven't resolved the trauma, you're still holding it in your body somewhere. You're still holding it in the feelings that you have and they're coming at you. And that's happening. And that's part of your trauma that you're carrying with you, right? You feel first. You see second. And so a lot of times, what do we have? Flashbacks, right? We call it that. And what that is, it's just unprocessed story. It's not a story yet. It's just you're seeing it. You have the attention on it. You know it's important. You can feel the feeling. What do you do about it, <laughs> right? And then you think third. So whenever you're talking to people who have um, uh, different neurological differences, like autism, ADHD, 
And also, interestingly enough, trauma, healing from trauma, you do some of the same things to make the connections. Um, one of the things that happens with a lot of people with autism is they think in pictures. So in order to make the leap from just thinking in pictures to also saying words or being able to tell the story, you have to find a way to get that story, that picture, and those feelings unisolated. You have to find a connection, a way to get through them, right? Well, one of the things, there's lots and lots of ways to do this, and I encourage you to find a good cognitive behavioral therapist and, and talk with them because they can help you with this a lot in your personal circumstances. And, you know, also, if you have a knowledgeable priest or pastor, sometimes they can help you too. So I'm telling you something that's much more limited in scope. I'm going to talk to you about some of the ways that you can overcome that gap with your prayers. So the way this way that we process things, we feel first, we see second, we think third, right? What happens is people would tell us something like, why don't you pray? <laughs> why don't you pray? And then God will heal you. And that is not untrue. However, they don't tell you how to pray. So I want to share with you what happened to me when I was a sophomore in college. After I'd had this experience and had this weird prayer about walking into the flame, I suddenly started to ask myself to see. I felt the feelings. I felt the despair. I felt the pain and the trauma. And I said, I want to see. Show me what I'm like to myself. And when I looked at myself, I saw something really devastating. I saw myself like a shattered mirror. I felt completely fractured and shattered and fragmented, and I didn't even know where to start. So I would read some advice that was probably holy and spiritual, but it wasn't for me at that time. It wasn't like a word in season. People would say, oh, imagine Jesus in this situation with you. And I was like, I think this is not for people who were going through the same particular things I was going through, because that's, that's gross. And Jesus should have been hurting some people. <laughs> you know, some of the things that I went through, I was like, no. That's just really hard to do. Like at the time, it was impossible for me to think that. Could I do it now? Maybe, but I don't know that that's the thing that would help me. So uh, I was not getting, I mean, I kept reading books and things and I just wasn't finding anything to tell me. So when I saw myself as shattered, I was just like, what do I do? What do I do? And finally, I came, I came across this idea of, you know, the way that God would look at you know, that idea of fire and that idea of mirror. And the way that the goldsmith, you know, the refiner, will keep on taking the dross off of something until they can see their face in it. And I was like, wait a minute, that's it. I'm shattered. I can't see God in me. But what if, what if all the pieces of me that I can't even see right now, I don't even know how shattered I am. I don't even know how broken I am. I can't tell you where I'm damaged. I was just too damaged. What if God can see all of them? And what if that's my hope? So what I prayed was that God would shine his face, would look at me with love, all the parts of me, even the ones I couldn't see, so that every fragment of me, every shattered part of me, would have the image of God on it. And that's how I would become whole again, was by starting to look like God. And I knew that if that happened, yeah, God's a fire, that I would come back together. Now. That's been a long time, and I think to a large extent that's happened. But what I want to do is show you something. So I have this little mirror here, and yeah, you're going to see like the bottom of my camera stand. But look at this. This is an icon. And what I want to do is show you right here. This is a, a picture of Jesus. And I want you to do this as a prayer exercise. If you are like me, if you have been through too much, and you can't find yourself and you don't know what to ask, you don't know how to pray, then ask God to look at you. He knows everything. He knows all the parts of you. There's no part of you that he didn't make. There's no part of you that he doesn't love. And ask God in his love to look on you, look on all the parts of you, till his face shines on all of it. And when that happens, you will start to come back together. You will start to feel his love and experience the healing of God. So that's what I would encourage you to do, is to go, if you need to get a mirror and a picture of Christ, do it, do what I'm doing now, if that helps you to pray. 
if all you do is say, God, look at me. The thing is, is a lot of us have experienced a gaze that was not holy, a gaze that was hurtful, one that was wanting to hurt us or kill us or have power over us, humiliate us, put us down, crush us, use us to try to fulfill some sort of sick fantasy. Who knows, okay? People have looked at us wrong, but God's not going to look at us like that. He's going to look at us right. So you can trust God for this. You may not know how to look at God. You may be too afraid to do so right now. But at least look through a mirror. At least hold up a mirror and look at Christ that way. That's not that weird. For now we see us through a mirror darkly. Okay? But then face to face. That's not just heaven. Okay, God will come to you. He loves you. And love never ends. So that's what I have for you today. The P is for prayer. For PTSD. Today's topic was shattered. And I want you to all go home or where you are, get a mirror, and look at Christ through it. And remember that God is looking at you. Whatever parts of you there are, however many parts there are, however broken you feel, it doesn't matter in terms of whether or not God can find you. The smallest fragment, he can see. Everything about you, ask God to look on it until every part of you reflects the love of God and the face of God. And then you're going to come back together. All right. May God bless us all.